welcome to Reading Between the Lines. My name is Nathan, you know that. And today, or this weekend, the readings are about integrity. Uh, I want you to think about um, someone who's wronged you, right? Who's done something that you are uh, really upset about. Usually we're upset by someone else's actions when they're not what we expect, right? We don't really get upset at the person who's kind of like a jerk and they treat us like horribly. Like, I mean, like it's not great, but we, we expect that. We, we don't expect anything more from that person. But what about that person who's a friend of ours or a family member and we expect something over here and they do something down here and we feel like they've betrayed us or like we can't trust them anymore, right? There, there's a lack of integrity there. So integrity is doing the actions that go along with what we believe. And the reason I'm talking about integrity is because um, the first reading opens with Paul. And Paul has just converted to Christianity or what they called the way, right? The way of Jesus. Um, he was persecuting Christians and then and then he had a vision of Jesus and Jesus was like, why are you why are you hurting me? And then he and then he stopped, right? Now, Paul is a man of integrity, right? He believed that he was doing the right thing. He believed that these new Christian people were, um, were harmful to the Jews and to his people. And so he was, he, was, he was going after them. And as soon as he realized by his vision from Jesus that, that he was doing the wrong thing, then he, he changed. And he was like, oh. And he started living that same life of integrity just with a different set of beliefs, now believing that that um, these Christians were, were good. And he actually joined them, and he became a huge leader in the church, right? And now a lot of what we read in the Bible is from Paul. So Paul shows us this example of living a life of integrity, right? And it really quickly changed from the Christians being afraid of Paul because he knew that he was a man of integrity, and he was going to get them and put them in prison or kill them. Um, it changed from that to them trusting him and them following him and seeing him as a leader in this new church because he's a man of integrity. And when a person has integrity, you can trust that what they say and what they believe, that's the way they're gonna act. The second reading starts by saying, children, don't love by what you say, love by what you do, right? And it's interesting that it doesn't say, don't act by what you say, act by what you do but it says don't love by what you say, love by what you do, right? This idea that love is the way we're supposed to be relating to other people, but the second reading is saying don't, don't just say things. Don't just say I love you. Don't say, um, yeah, I'll do this thing or, I, or, or I'll be there at this time, but do those things. Like that's the whole idea of love, right? This whole idea that love is an action, it's a verb, it's doing, right? Not just talking about it, but doing it. Maybe you have a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, or if you're older, a husband or wife, um, who says a lot of things, right? They say they're gonna do stuff. They say they're gonna be there. Um, they say they love you or they care about you, but maybe they don't act that way, right? Or maybe they don't know how to act that way in a way that really translates to you and to your wants and your needs. Um, that's an issue. That's a huge issue, right? Because after a while, you're like, I know you tell me this stuff, but I can't believe it because you never do it or you don't do it nearly as often as you say it, right? That's a problem. And that's what the second reading is talking about. It's saying, hey, if you really love somebody, that's great, but are your actions showing it or not? And that's kind of the whole point, right? It would be way better that your actions showed that you loved someone, even if you never said it. Although, the best thing is to do it and say it so that you can kind of cover all those bases and angles and a person can really know and feel loved by you, right? And then we have the gospel where Jesus is saying um, that he's, he's using the analogy of, of, of like uh, him being him being the vine, him being the tree and us the branches, right? I don't know if you like planting things or... Um, gardening at all um we have a pecan tree in our in our backyard and um i pruned it a lot a couple months ago <laughs> and i was really worried that i killed it um because i pruned it back so much it was this huge pecan tree and i kind of like brought it down a lot um and so i was watering it a lot 
and I was praying a lot because I didn't want to kill it because it was my grandpa's tree and I and I and I and I didn't want to be the one that messed it up. Luckily enough, thank God that uh, I guess the water and the tree strong enough to where it was able to provide enough nutrients to like the ends so that little sprouts can grow and things can bud and, and start to, to start to bloom and and leaves are showing up now. Um, that's what Jesus is talking about. He's saying that he's the source. He's the center of it. He's that trunk of the tree, right? And we are the branches. And the truth is we can't do anything without him. We can't do anything good without him, right? We can do things that look good. We can do things that seem good temporarily. But ultimately, we anything that we do that's good is, is through him. It's because we're connected to him in whatever, in whatever way. Even if we don't acknowledge it, or even if we don't understand it, or even if um, we try to deny it, right? Everything we do that's good is connected to Jesus, right? There's a part in the book, The Shack, or if you saw the movie, The Shack, where uh, the guy, the main guy, he meets Jesus, and Jesus takes him out on the lake, and, and he tells them to walk with him, and they start walking on the water together. And the guy's like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then later on, him and Jesus are on the like on the beach, and the guy wants to do the whole walking on the water thing again. And so he goes out and tries to start walking on water. And he just like sinks and he falls down. And he's like, what the heck, Jesus, what happened? And Jesus is like, well, you, you kind of have to do that with me. You can't just do that on your own, right? And it's this idea that, yeah, sometimes we forget that we are connected to Christ, right? And um, we take for granted the things that he helps us do and that he allows us to do and that he gives us the strength and the grace to do um and so when we try to do it on our own or in a way that's not um maybe how he would do it uh we kind of fall and we kind of fail and then that's when we stumble right so he's telling us in the gospel remember who you are remember who you are simba right remember who you are remember that you're connected to me and that if you remember that Right, and you stay with me. You can do all sorts of amazing things with Jesus. This whole weekend, again, integrity. Let's be people of integrity. What are the things that we tell people that we're going to do, um, and how do we act? Does the way that we act match up with what we say? And if not, okay, maybe we can change that. Maybe we can make that better. Maybe we can be people of integrity so that. When we say we're Catholic, when we say we're a confirmed Christian adult in the church, when we say we're going to do something, it matches up exactly with what we believe. And people can trust that, hey, when that person says something, they're going to do it. And I can trust that person because they're a man, a woman of integrity. Let's be people of integrity in our faith and constantly try to be closer to God and Christ so that we can do that. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Take care. We hope you like this video. Please click subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time we post something new for you. God bless.